Live from Market Square in downtown San Antonio, this is SA Live. <laughs> oh, David, Touché, David. David for the win right there. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Longhorns are taking over Market Square as we count down to the rodeo kickoff this Saturday. Hello and happy Friday Eve, everyone. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. And I'm Mike Oster Hage at JPN Jr. <laughs> That's their names. Yep, the Longhorns are waiting outside and inside. We've got something really good. Oh, eat. yes, we are ready to eat. And I hope you're hungry because Gilbert de la Paz with Familia Cortez Restaurants joins us this afternoon with some big game recipes. Gilbert, what are we making today? Because it looks so good. We want to start the eating it. Finger food. <laughs> okay. Yes, of course, Super Bowl. It's a great game, but there's also got to be great food. And so today, um, we're making a couple of appetizers using our green tomatillo sauce that you can find in over 100 Texas throughout, 100 HEBs throughout Texas. So if you are going to make a, a lot of different things, it's so much easier if you can just, you know, get you just, one jar yes, and then do it all different Start ways, with right? a great base. Okay. With this, you can make so many things. So, Mike, you're going to go ahead and make our green chili um, chicken quesadilla. All right. Mm. Right here. Some shredded chicken mixed with some of our green tomatillo sauce and some green chilies. All right, and I'm just going to pop this on here. And you don't have to, you know, mm. cook your own chicken. You could buy already those. Um, oh, yeah, um, we're kind of already shredded. Yes. And, I yes, love those things. Yes. Really easy. And, <laughs> and then you're going to layer some. Okay. Um, you can use Monterey Jack cheese. That's what's ready available. Okay. Or if you got some access to some Chihuahua cheese, we'll go great with that. Okay. So I love it with green chilies. You, Add some green chilies, like mm -hmm. and Fiona. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get you started. We're gonna make our um, sauce for our chicken wings. Oh, because so, that's what it looks like right there, the finished product. Ooh. Exactly, you can do it with a boneless um, chicken, or this one has the bone on mm -hmm. right here. So you can start with by placing some of our green tomatillo sauce in the pan. Okay. And you're just gonna let that heat up, thicken a little bit. I like to add a little bit of green chilies to give a little bit of heat because green chilies aren't really that spicy. They're just there mm -hmm. for a subtle heat. Now, while she's, while she's doing that, mm -hmm. um, back to, to this very quickly. This is a dry pan. Do you want to do it dry or do you want to put oil in there? Or you know, way? you could do it either way. You know, okay. if you're watching your calories, use a coconut oil, an olive oil. Um, some or, people like to do it dry. They're really trying to save some calories. So it's more toasted as opposed to being kind exactly. of fried on the sides. So. You know, a little okay. bit of oil does add flavor, though. Okay. So, and then you'll you'll simply just go ahead and do a little flip on that and oh, you're get a little bit of tongue, toasty right there. Okay. And then once it's all toasted up, oh, you're just going to um, slice, and dice, you know, slice, slice it up. And, uh -huh. yep. and, go and then, Fiona, there. we got some chicken wings already cooked. So just put this in this here? This is, yes, just put it in there. And you'll just do a, a toss on that. Okay. And it's as simple as that? As simple as that. Wow. You know, I like a little bit of, um, you can use Parmesan, or this is Cotija cheese. Mm -hmm. It's the Mexican Parmesan version. And just a little sprinkle <gasps> of that adds flavor because um, the sauce, the tomatillo is a little bit tarty. That will, you know, make it a little bit softened up there in flavor. So if you don't feel like cooking... You guys uh, got any specials going on? on yes, we do. On Super Bowl Sunday, our mariachi bar, which is located inside of Mi Tierra mm -hmm. restaurant, has a Super Bowl um, party going on where oh, you, really? they'll have a buffet set up of appetizers and some drink specials. Mm -hmm. And then at Pico de Gallo restaurant, our restaurant down the street, we have our chicken wings we'll be featuring okay. that day. Let me grab these for mm -hmm. you right there. Do you have to make reservations? Is it recommended? Um, well, honestly, we're not going to deny you if you just walk up. So, okay. you know, They'll find you, a seat for you. If you find where you don't want to be at home, please come out and join us okay. and um, enjoy the fun that's going to be happening. We're also going to be having at the Mariachi Bar some prizes to be given away. Oh, really? Yeah, they're going to be playing the cornhole um, pitch ah, game, so mm -hmm. there's prizes to give out there. So well, two great recipes made with the green, green chili, chili sauce. Yeah. What's another one that you could do? You know what? This guacamole right here. You add a little bit of our green tomatillo sauce. Very simple. Mash up some avocado. If you like onions in there, add mm -hmm. onions. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, it goes excellent. You can also use it as a soup base for our green pozole soup. We do have recipes on our um, Familia Cortez website, mm. so please, I invite you to come out and check our website out. Um, enjoy mm. some of the sauce at um, the HEBs. You'll find it at the HEBs that have the cooking connection. Oh, right. wow. That's very good. All right, for more information, of course, on La Familia Cortez restaurants, just head to lafamiliacortez.com. 
Okay. We're continuing mm-hmm. with all the food for <laughs> the big game. David Elder mm-hmm. takes us inside a north side spot. Just Thank keep you. doing complete with <laughs> lots of screens for watching the big game and great food selections. Mm-hmm. Walk-Ons is a Louisiana-based bistro and sports bar co-owned by NFL Super Bowl champion Drew Brees, and they are cranking out some seriously delicious food out of their scratch kitchen. I got another fried pickles walking in. Like their gigantic barbecue onion ring burger. Two fresh burger buns get buttered and toasted, then a fresh all-beef patty gets smashed on a flat top. The patty gets topped with two slices of bacon, shredded cheddar cheese, and a mound of onion rings. Then they let it rain barbecue sauce. The burger is held together with a knife and served with their waffle fries. Bam! That's a big burger. Look at this thing. Fair warning though, you might make a mess when you order it. The meat is seasoned perfectly. It has a nice char on the outside because that's that smashing technique that's from the, you got bacon, barbecue sauce, onion rings. You're ordering this when you're hungry, all right? That's gonna feed you. That is really good. If you love Cajun flavors, their Cajun quesadilla is a great twist on the Tex-Mex classic. Fresh boudin Cajun sausage, cheese, grilled chicken, andouille sausage, sauteed mushrooms, caramelized onions, crushed red pepper flakes, and more cheese get packed inside an oversized tortilla. It gets pressed, cut, and served with red beans and a Cajun-inspired dipping sauce. Order up! I'm gonna bite into this bad boy, I'm gonna dip it. Cause you know that's all you gotta do, you gotta dip it. Lord have mercy. Oh, that's messy, but delicious. It's just enough spice in there to get going. Fantastic. The meat is really, really good. Seasoned earlier, it's all prepared fresh. The onions are cooked perfectly. The mushrooms are nice and tender. And that cheese is melty. And for dessert, Walk-Ons takes your taste buds on a sugar journey through Tasty Land with their crispy cream donut bread pudding. One dozen donuts get chopped and covered in eggs, sugar, cream, and vanilla syrup. Then the dessert gets wrapped and sits in the refrigerator to absorb all the moisture and gets sliced and baked to order. The Krispy Kreme donut bread pudding gets topped with icing and whipped cream and is ready to devour. Oh, now this isn't just a normal bread pudding, all right? This is Krispy Kreme donut bread pudding. Next level bread pudding. I'm gonna dip it right in the whip. This is made out of donuts. That's crazy. This is bread pudding for now on. I want my Krispy Kreme bread pudding from Walk-Ons. Phenomenal. Football's big game is this weekend, and Walk-Ons and I are teaming up to offer the Elder Eats Party Tray, featuring burger sliders, queso, boudin balls, mozzarella sticks, and boneless buffalo wings that will feed three to five hungry fans. You can eat your Elder Eats Party Tray while serving yourself a beer at their new tables. When it's nice and busy, right? We all know that we all hate waiting for a nice cold beer, especially when you're eating that party platter and those wings are pretty spicy. So what you're gonna do is let your server know that you're interested in pouring your own beers at our top table. I don't go to chain restaurants because usually they're serving frozen fried food and nothing's made fresh, but walk-ons proved me wrong. They're making legitimately delicious Louisiana food in a scratch kitchen that tastes like a mom and pop restaurant. So you guys gotta come out to walk-ons, I-10 and Hebner Oaks or 281 in Hollywood Park. Look at all that food, perfect for the big game. Come get a fresh beer at your table, pour it yourself, enjoy the delicious food. It is fantastic out here and it's a family friendly environment. So bring everybody, just not the dog. Leave the dog at home, okay? Keep eating San Antonio for SA Live. I'm David Elder. Crispy cream bread. Wow. Okay, still ahead on SA Live. Are you throwing your own party for the big game? We have some even more appetizer ideas to impress your guests. And what's more Texas than some Longhorns? We're heading outside to get up close with these beauties. You won't want to miss it. Oh, they are a symbol of Texas and the Old West. We are definitely rodeo ready when Longhorns stop by Market Square. 
And joining us today is Dr. Scott Kimball with the South Texas Longhorn Association and Kimball Cattle. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And who'd you bring with you today? We brought Junior today. Okay. <laughs> and Junior, Junior's, hi. And Junior's a steer, and he's a young, young steer. He's 14 months old. That's it. Now, how much bigger is he going to be getting? Uh, he will get probably over about 2,000 pounds. Wow. He'll get over about six foot tall at the shoulder. Oh, really? He, yeah, it'll be about five, six years from now until he'll get that age. Wow. Get that size. Now, as far as do. the horns, you know, because, mm -hmm. of course, we think of the classic long horns as uh, JP yes. that McKenna has right mm -hmm. there with the nice thread. You said that's the... The Texas twist. The Texas twist yes. going on. But his horns... They're more different. They're more modern. The modern is a style. They okay. want the low swooping style now to get more width. Mm -hmm. Instead of them being like JP's, they got a twist. They want to untwist that and get more length and width on them because that's more money at market. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. The more color you have and the more horn you got, the more money you got. The okay. interesting thing, I'm, too, is that this is, feels like a hand warmer. Yeah, all the way out, all the way out to the tip, he's warm. All right. Because he's, he's still growing. That's full of blood all the way out. And they will grow to three and a half to four inches a month at this age of the ball game. She will only grow about probably about a half inch a year because she's 12. And her blood is only halfway out her horns. Mm-hmm. And she's got the scars on the huh. horns. Yes, she does. Damage them, and that will never go away. Right? No. Okay. And these guys, of course, will be making their way through the streets of downtown this Saturday during the cattle drive. Yes, ma'am. Both of them. I will take their halters off, and they'll have free walk. <laughs> and the other interesting fact that we were talking about with Longhorns, it's the only cattle in the U.S. that's uh, protected. Yes, the uh, uh, federal government um, back in the '60s, I believe, 1960, actually went down and had some of the Longhorn cattle and they were DNA tested back at that time and checked to get the most pure longhorn cattle bloodline that they could find. And there's called a wildlife refuge. Wichita Wildlife Refuge is in Oklahoma and they have some of the oldest and the most pure seed stock of the cattle and they're only, my understanding, only federally protected cattle in the United States. Interesting. <laughs> oh, and of course, what else can people expect at this year's cattle drive with your longhorns? Well, we're gonna bring at least 60 head of stock when I get here. They'll be free walking. We actually have um, cowboys that are actually going to be, um, have won at the San Antonio Stock Show in the um, uh, performances that they're going to be with us walking the cattle on their horses to make sure that they behave themselves. Ah, okay. I'll be on my foot walking. My daughter will be on feet walking. And so will my brother-in-law to make sure that if something gets out of hand, which it will not be, that we can go take care of them just like we do here. The other thing, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about the differences between the horns and, of course, JP yes. is the classic, you know, Texas Longhorn looking right. color and the horns. And this is the only other thing unique with them, different color patterns. Well, each, each Longhorn is going to be have its own unique fingerprint color and style. Um, even we actually went back and had a steer cloned mm -hmm. and we had five clones out of him. And the cloning factor of thinking is, is that everything's going to be identical. It's not. Every one of them had different color patterns, different growth patterns, different horn patterns, different feet patterns, the whole bit. That's just a God-given phenomenon about the Longhorn. You can't clone them to be specifically the same. Wow. Amazing. Exactly. <laughs> wow. And, and also, you think of it as being the all-American cattle, but yes. it's not. Mm -hmm. No. Originated in Europe. Mm -hmm. You originated, and these are actually from, uh, originally bloodline was from Africa that moved oh. into Spain, and Christopher Columbus brought them over to Santo Domingo, and back in the uh, 1690s, there was a cattle drive that brought them from the middle of, of Mexico up into the United States. And back then, the cattle, the original cattle, were kind of a dark black with red markings on top, as he illustrates. Mm -hmm. The red marking on the, on the, on the top All line, the yeah. you see the nose, the mealy nose. Yes. You see the, the colors in the ears. And the okay. original stock had the same color on their tail and also around their feet. That's the old original bloodline that we can pick up from Interesting. Spain. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very mm -hmm. much. You're very welcome. Very informative. Appreciate You're welcome. that. And don't forget about the cattle drive. It is this Saturday at 11 o'clock. And come on down and join us watching all of them come down Houston Street. And, of course, there's a lot going on down there. But if you want to sit in the comfort of your own living room, we start broadcasting at 11 o'clock. Yes, we will be there live along the route and the Vaquero Cook-Off at the Vaquero Cook-Off. So be sure to tune in right here on KSAT 12. And hey, what, what if you want to go to the rodeo? Guess what? We're going to help that happen. Hey, that's a great idea. So enter to win at KSAT.com slash rodeo. And if you don't win today, give it another try tomorrow. And don't forget, rodeo starts 
one week from today, the 7th, and runs through the 24th. A whole lot going on. The Vaquero Cookoff this weekend, mm -hmm. and they've got the rodeo after dark, dark. going on. Mm -hmm. All the mm -hmm. bands all around there. A lot going on there. All, all right. right. Still ahead on the show, how one local teenager is changing the world for the better with her foundation based right here in San Antonio. And next on SA Live, climb, jump, fall, and get back up for a <laughs> whole lot. <laughs> It's <laughs> so much fun. Looks like you're a rotisserie <laughs> chicken. <laughs> Urban Air Adventure Park. This month's big adventure is coming up. Whoa. Please help foot too. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, get ready to go airborne in our big adventure this month as I head on over to Urban Air Adventure Park on the north side. And this is a blast. I got to test it all out. It's a lot of fun. So take a look. Okay, so we're here at the latest adventure park, kind of up above looking it over with owner Michelle Hoskins. And wow, okay, I'm winded. I've had a workout already. This place is fantastic. It's amazing. It is the newest, greatest indoor amusement park, adventure park, whatever you want to call it in San Antonio. What they see is our wonderful attractions. We have a sky rider. <laughs> we have a ropes course. Spidey senses are tingling. Uh, Ninja Warrior course that lights up. It has something for everybody. We have uh, wipe out. Mm. We got it. So everything for all ages as well? All ages. If you can crawl or you can walk, we have it. Uh. So this is the thing you see in the movies all the time where like somebody has to jump off the cliff and grab a hold of the tree and you think, eh, doesn't look that bad. Okay. Here we go. Ready? I survived. <laughs> And uh, you can also rent it out for parties. Absolutely. We have um, this area that we're in right now. We have five rooms that you can rent out, a private uh, lounge area. You can rent out for birthday parties, for, uh, team events, corporate events. You name it, we can do it. Your event's going on this week for grand opening. Absolutely. We have two wonderful events um, for our grand opening. The first event is for our first responders in our military. That's going to be on Friday. So if you're a first responder or if you are in the military, active or retired, um, you can come bring your family to the park for free. But the grand opening is it's going to be on Saturday, Saturday at 10 a.m. The first 200 people that pay to get into the park, ultimate pass, get a one-year pass to come to the park for the whole year. Wow. So pay to get in, and then you can come for the next for the, 365 yep. days. And we're only giving out 200, so it's the first 200 to come in to get the pass. They get it. 10 o'clock Saturday. 10 o'clock Saturday morning. All right. We're centrally located. We're close to the airport. We're between 281 and 410. So in terms of accessibility, being close to a mall, you have everything that you can imagine here in the park to do. Not only that, we're going to have special special things that we're going to be doing here for parents. So that we'll have drop-ins where you can drop your children in. You can go out to dinner and we'll take care of your children for you. Or even if you just wanted to come and just hang out for a couple hours with us, we'll allow you to come and do that and experience the wonder of the park. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And a very special thanks to Ansira Winton Chevrolet for sponsoring our big adventures every month. And be sure to head out to their Ansira dealerships for a ride to your next big adventure. Okay, still ahead on SA Live. Who's ready for the big game this weekend? We're whipping up some delicious appetizers. At all for those get togethers. Plus, what's your go to game day party snack? We hit the street to ask locals their foodie faves. That's a little bit later on the show. We'll be back after the break. Hey guys, it's April Ansira from Ansira Wind Chevrolet. 
Thanks for joining us on this month's SA Live Big Adventure. Make sure to watch each month as the SA Live team takes you to new places all over South Texas. And don't forget, and Win Chevrolet can get you on your next big adventure too. Just stop by or visit AnsiraChev.com. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, we're getting ready for the big game. And after that, the big cleanup. Oh, yes. What do you do with all those wing and pizza boxes? Do you recycle the plastic cups? Well, Marcus Lee with the City of San Antonio Solid Waste Management Department is here to talk about recycling. Welcome, welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. Our pleasure. Tell us a little bit about the city's recycling education efforts. Well, the City of San Antonio Solid Waste Department has a very active education outreach program. We have four full-time recycling coordinators, and last year they made over a thousand presentations into local schools, community events, and that reached an estimated 82,000 San Antonio residents. And the sole purpose was to just communicate and educate San Antonio-specific recycling and organics programs and how to participate correctly. And these recycling programs, I mean, they are incredibly important, right? They, they very much are for several reasons. Um, the main reason, though, is let's look ahead. As our city grows and the year's out, uh, the goal is to really divert, uh, not send as much uh, volume, tonnage to the landfill. And the way you do that is you recycle better and more and correctly, and you use the organics program in San Antonio to its maximum capacity as well. So less to the landfill, that's the goal. Always the goal. And is there anything new for this year's programs? In the outreach programs, yes, there are. There are a couple of things. One we'll show you in just a moment. Mm -hmm. um, this year we're reaching out to San Antonio's many thousands of homeschool families. We've never been able to do that because we can't go into their school. And so we have a series of expo, recycling expos. Uh, those dates and that information is on the website, sarecycles.org. You can register there. You can learn about what um, you can expect at these expos, but we're very excited to welcome um, for us a new audience, the homeschool families of Greater San Antonio. All right. Now, you mentioned one of the new new things with the program this year yes. is a game. We've got Mike standing by with that. With recycling coordinator Lamar Hicks. And recycling, it seems simple, but then it is kind of complicated. And you've thrown in the third barrel because I only have the two of them <laughs> in my backyard uh -huh. in the alley back there. And, you know, it's cardboard and plastic over here and everything else in the other one. But how's this game work? So the game work is called Card Smart. All this stuff is going to fall from the top of the ceiling. And what you're going to do is you're going to press it. And you're going to make sure you put it inside the right cart. Sometimes you got to be careful because there's things that can go inside both carts. But we want you to make the best choice as far as where to put the item at. Okay. And this is where it gets kind of complicated because certain things that you think are supposed to mm -hmm. go in here, they don't because of what is going on. So... Okay, and not everybody has a green cart. Not everybody has a green cart right now, um, but most of our most of our uh, city services, most of our people who have our services, going to have the green cart. But we're still working on a green cart for everybody else. Okay, and this is one thing we want to emphasize. This is for San Antonio. Yes, if only city of San Antonio may have different rules. So, mm -hmm. Okay, let's start the game. All right, so I'm gonna press start. When I press start, you're gonna make sure you press it and put it over it. It's gonna fall off. It's gonna give you one point for right, two point for wrong. You ready? Tough game. Okay, All right. Go. Uh, that goes in there. This, great, I got buzzed already. That goes, <laughs> seriously? That goes in there. This goes in there. Nice. Uh, there you go. That okay. goes in there. All right, Wait, way to come back. How the bananas come back down again? Uh, milk carton goes over, oh, there. Oh, uh, oh. Pizza, oh, no. Pizza box. I thought it was if it, oh. no. Wait a minute. Oh. What is that? Oh, that's a coffee filter. Oh, no. Coffee filter. I know that one goes over there. Cornflakes box goes over there. Um, oh. All right. So you got one point. Well, you, I got a, you got five right, but you got four incorrect. Remember, you get hey, two for I was on the right. positive side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So plastic candy wrappers in the blue cart, that does not go in there. It goes in the trash can. Any small piece of plastic, any single plastic, go inside the brown, brown cart. Okay. I placed the coffee cup in there. It's, it's cardboard. It's, it's usually lined with a certain type of lining on there. So we want to make sure we put that inside of the brown cart. It's not going inside the uh, blue you cart will... or the green cart. Okay, the milk carton goes in the green cart, not the recycle. It goes in the blue cart. The blue cart. As long as it's clean, it can go inside the blue one cart. And pizza boxes are supposed to go in the green one? In the green cart, because okay. it's paper, but it's dirty paper. All right. That's interesting. Very educational. And the City of San Antonio Solid Waste Management Department offers education outreach programs for recycling. And also you can get a list of what goes in what cart there. 
can study that one. They have a recycling expo for the homeschool kids, students at the Hardberger Park Ecology Center. For more information, go online to sarecycles.org. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Very informative. Still ahead, a wish to help other kids just like her. We'll introduce you to this local teen and learn more about her foundation, Rebecca's Wish. And next on SA Live, finger foods and savory bites. We're sharing some game day recipes just in time for your weekend party. You know, it's not about the score. It's mm. about the food coming up Sunday. And boy, have we mm. got some good stuff from savory to sweet. And Leo Davila with Catch the Wave is yes, sir. here. Good afternoon. Good to see How you, How are you? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you all, too. So it's, you don't want a big meal. You just want... The little tidbits. Exactly. Because so, there's no calories in those, right? No, definitely no calories. So <laughs> when you host parties, you don't want to be stuck cooking. You want to have fun with your friends. So this is a little bit of a make ahead, and we finish right before the big game. Put them out, little quick bites. We do in a savory and a sweet. And what is Fiona salivating over yes. right now? So this right here is an Asian glazed meatball. It's gluten-free. Mm -hmm. uh, no egg as well. Um, and then on the bottom, we, we use a little bit of a cauliflower foam that we made. Um, that's going to go right on the bottom instead of having like a potato or something heavy. Yes, and you heard that cauliflower foam. <laughs> foam. So we've got the uh, meatballs going right here. Meatballs are going. Pan. So we're just going to throw a little bit of glaze right on top of them. Just like this. And, and then we also included some cauliflower just in case, you know, you want to stay away from the meat. Mike, how do you like spice? Are you a spicy mm. type of guy? We'll got a, a bit of a kick. We'll go a little bit mm. of a kick. Okay, okay. throw just a touch of that. That's our salsa matcha. So we're down at the Hebner Oaks Farmer's Market right now. You can actually pick up our salsa matcha as well as our jams and jellies okay. and some of our great lemonades. Um, all right, so let's grab that plate. Now, if you made the meatballs, how far in advance do you do them? You um, I mean, a couple days in advance, you can actually leave them in the fridge, put them in the freezer. That might be it is really hot. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So what we'll do, Mike, put, put the plate down and then go ahead and use a white whip. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, so let's go ahead and whip some of that out right there, right in the middle of the plate. This is how'd you make it again? So it's cauliflower that we roasted. Threw a little bit of potato in yeah. there just to stabilize it. There you go. And oh, we'll wow! Throw, Look at that. We'll throw the we'll throw so, the meatballs right on top. So people think that's whipped cream, but it's actually kind of healthy. Yeah, cream, so. nice and light and airy. And then we also did a little bit of green onion and a little bit of a candied walnut as well. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll throw some of that candied walnut on there. Ah, ooh, that sounds good too. Yeah, it's really really nice. Super simple to make. Um, you can buy those if you don't actually want to make them yourselves. And then just a touch of the green onion as well. Mm -hmm. And then so that's the savory side. So the sweet side, we did a gluten-free Dutch baby. So a Dutch baby is an oven pancake. Mm -hmm. uh, we use gluten-free flour in it. Um, and then we sell one of our apple jellies down at the market. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. So we're going to load this guy up with a lot of the apple jelly right in the middle. Everybody who's every net Cracker Bear loves their fried apples, so we made our own take on fried apples mm -hmm. right on top. Oh, wow. And we'll cut off a piece, Fiona. Mm -hmm. If you can pass me a plate that's yes, right there in front of you. Yes, of course I you. can. Mm -hmm. I'll get you a oh slice. And of course, what else do we need? Just a little bit more sweetness. Mm -hmm. So we'll throw a touch of powdered sugar right on top. Okay. And, and of course, where can folks find your products? So Hebner Oaks Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. We're there every Saturday. And then online at catchthewave.io. You can check us out. Okay. okay. Those meatballs are really good. Yes, that does have a kick to it. <laughs> yes, indeed, that does have a kick. And this, the, the cauliflower. It's nice cauliflower. and light, airy. Yeah, and it, it's... A very unusual, and it's great. Yeah, all together, it really makes sense. It, it adds a whole new, um, <laughs> whole new flavor to it. Right there, what what so. do people need to remember when they're, you know, kind of game day meal prepping? So game day meal prepping is you don't want to go too, too much, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A lot of small bites. People are going to be coming over. Last yeah. thing you want to do is prepare a full meal. So I like to do about six or seven different small things, a couple mm -hmm. sweet, a couple savory, and it goes a long and way. And speaking of savory, so we've got That's got our this. salsa matcha. Okay. So it's a seven dry spice chili. And then on this side, we do five different types of jams and jellies. What are the flavors so of So strawberry, there? strawberry pineapple, traditional apple, um, mixed berry. And then mm -hmm. we're doing a uh, blueberry pineapple as well. And then we also have a brown sugar lemonade and a black tea Arnold Palmer. Ooh. Who do you think is going to win Sunday? I wanted the Saints in there. <laughs> but, don't don't but keep I going know, on that now. I know. I, know. Well, I, I guess I'll go for Tom Brady, <laughs> the goat, right? Why oh, not? man. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, all gluten-free. Heavens to Betsy. Mm. If you'd like more information, <laughs> we're chewing both of us right now <laughs> about all of Leo's 
things, as well as catch the wave. Just go to uh, salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right. I think most would agree that one of the most exciting parts about watching the big game on mm -hmm. Sunday is all that food. Yes. Of course it is. We were just talking about that. And that's true. And we hit the streets, we asked locals what their favorite game day snacks and meals are. So take a look. Definitely have to go with chicken wings. They're just juicy and delicious. My favorite snack is nachos or pizza. My go-to snack food is jalapeno poppers because it has bacon and jalapenos. <laughs> I'd have to go with my number two is chips and salsa. My favorite snack is hot wings. A little bit of, of spiciness that goes with the game. Jalapeno poppers, the spiciness. I love jalapenos. I eat jalapeno poppers every year. My go-to snack is seven layer dip because it's delicious. I eat it every year. on SA Live, how one local teen is taking working to find a cure for pediatric pancreat pancreatitis, all while helping other children with the same disease. That's after the break. Welcome, welcome back to SA Live. It was Memorial Day weekend of 2010 that Rebecca Taylor was admitted to the hospital for stomach pains, the first of what would become well over a thousand days of hospitalization. She was diagnosed with pediatric pancreatitis. Her family then uprooted to Minnesota, where she received a life saving experimental transplant. Despite the unwavering pain, Rebecca, now 16, lives life to the fullest, hospital or not. And today she's helping other children, other very sick children, through her foundation, Rebecca's Wish. And Jen Tobias Trusky has her story. When the Make-A-Wish Foundation visited Rebecca Taylor to ask what she would like granted, they received an answer unlike any other. Rebecca said to him, sitting here in our living room, and said, I would like to meet with a medical philanthropist and start the first charity for children with pediatric pancreatitis. Well, they just stared at her and were <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what? We decided that that was what I wanted to do with it because I was able to help others. and. This way, my wish could always be there for me instead of just being like a trip or a gift or something that would go away in time. Her foundation, Rebecca's Wish, helps other children with treatment, medical cost, and awareness for a disease that is often misdiagnosed. It's really awesome to hear them say that they've never met someone before who's had the same thing as them. And they just start, they usually start crying and then just give me a hug, but they love to know that they're not alone in it. Pediatric pancreatitis is a disease in which the pancreas becomes inflamed. A pain, Rebecca says, is unbearable. I, I wouldn't be able to move for hours at a time or get up because it would hurt sometimes to even have blankets on me. She has undergone 70 surgeries, spending most holidays in and out of the hospital. Rebecca's family helped to bring holiday celebrations into the hospital, turning that part of their journey into a positive experience. The hospital, we didn't look at it always as a negative. We looked at it as a second home, and we are hoping these other patients can do the same thing. Today, Rebecca is thriving in high school, continuing to raise money for her foundation in hopes of finding a cure. We help a lot of kids, but one of the best stories is a girl who I met a few weeks ago and she had been in and out of the hospital for a long time with pancreatitis. Then somehow we met her mother and when she found out that I had pancreatitis she started crying and she told her daughter and her daughter said it immediately got her out of her depression cycle because she realized she wasn't alone anymore. I uh, just find remarkable about the whole journey that you can take something really bad and can turn it into something remarkably good if you make a choice. It certainly would have been easier to, if she would have just said, hey, I'd like to meet Taylor Swift. <laughs> Not that Taylor still couldn't do that. <laughs> it would have been easier if Taylor would have, uh, she just would have had a wish that, that was um, simply event driven, but instead she chose to make a, a lifelong impact and we're proud of her and we're just trying to do everything we can to help her. For SA Live. I'm Jen Tobias Strusky. Wow, what do you say coming out of a story like that? Right? 
<sighs> well, you can help too. The San Antonio Zoo is hosting Wild for Wishes to benefit Rebecca's Wish. The event is March 30th from 6 to 9 p.m. For ticket information, just head to Rebecca'sWish.org. And like she said, her mm -hmm. wish comes true every time, every time somebody's helped out because of it. Very special thank you to all of our KSAT community sponsors, Energy Transfer, San Antonio Area Chevy Dealers, and University Health Systems. Way to go, Rebecca. All right, tomorrow on SA Live, we are live at the Vaquero Cook-Off with these lovely ladies, the Little Wranglers. May teach our Jen Tobias Trusky some of their moves. Plus, sushi with a Texas twist. We take you inside Cowboy Sushi tomorrow to get a taste of their unique menu offering. That was so cool having the Longhorns on today. Right. Yeah. And there's yeah, going to be more of this weekend. There's going to be more this weekend, yes. But tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We are live at the Vaquero Cook-Off, of course. And the Little Wranglers may teach our Jen Tobias Strusky some moves. And stay in the Cowboy Spirit, Cowboy Sushi. That gets us ready for Saturday. Because, of course, Saturday is the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive. It is going to be right here on KSAT 12 at 11 o'clock. We will be there with all those other Longhorns. And there's JP. <laughs> I wonder if she's going to be there. <laughs> yes, I'll be so. there. Okay. Mm -hmm.